hey everybody that watches this which is like three of you um the first person i have the the first one i wanted to have here is your former president of davie county high school uh grace garner she um was in student council with me and that's how i know you um i know i didn't get to have you in class i didn't get to have you know a lot of interaction with you because i didn't join until your senior year mm -hmm. um but i really enjoyed the time we got to work together i could always count on you to get stuff done um mm -hmm. so if you want to introduce yourself a little bit more tell us about you and if not we'll just start talking yeah so i graduated in davie like what 2019 and so that means i'm going to be a sophomore at the university of north carolina at chapel hill go heels um yeah, I loved being at Davie. I've been here all my life. I moved here when I was like three. So I am a Davie girl born and raised. So, but yeah, I, and I've loved being home. So. Very good. And I know that you kind of got kicked out when we were kicked out. Yeah. So I know you and um, I spoke to Sierra Foster, who's also down there mm -hmm. um, and some other Carolina and Nick Quants at state. And you guys all mm -hmm. kind of came back to Davie at the same time. Yeah. Um, what was that like for you having to, you know, not getting to finish your freshman year? Because I remember moving out of Appalachian my freshman year and I was sitting and I was parked on the hill and I just had this realization like, oh my God, like I just finished a year of college and you, you yeah. kind of got that taken away from you. So what was that like? Crazy to say the least. I mean, that week before spring break is when everything started to hit. And then we came home for spring break. I think App was like the first one to say something. And then Carolina sent out an email like, hey, we're switching to virtual like you can't come back you need to be moved out in the next week and we were like oh my god so i texted my dad i was like we got to get the truck packed up like i have to go move out of everything and just like the realization like the physical year is like almost over like i am moved out like my dorm was empty all of my sweet mates had already moved out i waited till like the last day to do it because i just like was so unwilling to like let go of the fact that i was done um, and then we came back and did virtual classes. And so I was, I came back and I had to move into my guest room because my sister took over her room and my room while I was in college. So I'm still living in the guest room. Um, Emily. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Versus. Um, and so I put up my Harry Styles posters in my bedroom and went to class from there. And like, it was hard for sure. Like just the transition from like not seeing my professors face to face at all was just like so difficult. Um, but yeah, I think it, it was so surreal, like after finishing online classes, like so excited to be finished with them. But then like calling my friends and being like, I'm now a sophomore in college. Like that first year went by so insanely fast. And like, I feel like it's just slipping out of my palms. I'm like, oh, this is so scary. But also <laughs> it was good to have that month to come home and readjust to online. Cause now like everything's online, even though we're moving back in, like everything is now online for next semester. So we're figuring it out. And I was reading a thing, I was following a college football forum, um, and it was talking about um, some athletes had come back and some weren't, and some colleges are just canceling and some whole conferences are like, we're not playing sports. Yeah. I know the ACC is is trying to work something out. Yeah. Um, it seems like they're probably going to be only conference, if yeah. that. Um, but what was it like, um, or what, I guess, what do you think about, you, you going back to campus, you're going back to Chapel Hill, mm -hmm. and you, you know, while Carolina is great education for the money, it's still a lot of money. And the fact right. that you're not getting to go to those sports and you're not getting to use the gyms and like, do you have any opinions on that or, or any frustrations I mean, or? Oh, so frustrated. I like it, it's, I'm thankful because I'm on the Springer scholarship, which means I'm just paying room and board. Um, I'm not paying tuition, which is such a blessing. Um, but I mean, like I have a lot of friends who are staying home and are canceling their housing because they're like, we just can't afford it. Like our parents can't afford to spend $24,000 for me to sit in my dorm. Um, right. And it's, it, yeah, I, I'm so frustrated just because like all of our libraries are shut down. We can only go on the first floor of one library and it's like restricted access. Which one is that? Davis. Yeah, the okay. health science library is closed. The UL is closed. Like everything is closed down. Um, and then like the dining halls are like, 75% of the tables are closed off and there's one chair per table. So any sort of like social gathering we were going to get to have, they're just like, take it and leave, like go back to your dorm. So it's, it's frustrating. And like, we have a super suite in Morrison, which is like the big sophomore dorm, which means we have like a living room and they were like, nobody else is allowed in your living room unless you live there. And the people who live in your suite, if they're in the living room, you have to be wearing a mask. So it's like any social interaction is just completely like void at this point. So very frustrating for sure. I remember being like, I didn't go to Carolina, but I spent time there with friends because I, I was in um, app and I mm -hmm. went to state, um, okay. time at Carolina and I grew up a Carolina fan. Um, and I remember I went to a camp there and we were in Granville Towers and I just remember how everything is just so compact down there in the food court. 
And right. like, I can't, I'm why they're, they're cutting, you know, the tables off and everything, but like, it just, it must suck to be that close together and still have to be that spread apart. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. It's, I, and I understand why they're doing it. And I'm hoping that all the precautions that they're taking will make sure that we don't have to get sent back. Cause I mean, they've talked about like maybe in October or September, we might have to send you guys back. So as much as it sucks, like not being able to be in dining halls or to be in the libraries, like I'm hopeful that the precautions that they're taking means that we can stay on campus for like the full semester. So. Yeah. I mean, if nothing else, just being there puts you in a different mindset, like right. being on campus, you know, like none of you are there yet. Obviously you're still in high school and that's why you're listening to this, but like once you go to college, leaving the campus or the area or Boone or Raleigh or Chapel Hill or Charlotte or wherever it is that you go, it, your, your brain just kind of switches into a different mode. Oh, for sure. Um, so that's kind of what she's talking about here. And I, I totally get it. Yeah. Um, so clearly you've talked about how it's affected your life. It's affected all of us. Mm -hmm. Um, is there any one big thing aside from like, obviously everyone's life has been disrupted that right. something has massively changed with this? Like you've, you've re you've changed how you look at it or you've changed how you approach it or something like that. Hmm. That's a great question. I think, I think the way that I've approached just like spending time has just changed dramatically. Like, I think that for the first few months I came home from college and like you were saying, like, it's just a totally different feel. And so when I came home, it was like my place of rest. I was like, I just want to rest the whole time. Um, which I couldn't do because I, like, I still have to go to class. I still have to do my work. So I think that just like, trying to figure out how to spend my time has been so different for me and like having to find the motivation to like want to get up and do things and not to just like lay around and rest, which I think is why like going to work and like having a job has been so, so helpful. Um, and then also just like having to reconstruct your like time with family. Cause like the first month being home was great. I got to see my family again. We were playing games. But then after that, I was like, I'm ready to go back home to Chapel Hill. Like I'm ready to get out of here. Um, and just realizing like, I no longer can take those things for granted. Like, I think for a while I became numb to the fact that like people are still dying from this like horrible, horrible right. pandemic and like trying to structure my time to where like I'm not taking anything that I've been given for granted has been a huge life switch for me. Just like realizing that like I am so privileged and grateful that I get to come home and that I have a home to go to, you know, when I come home from college and that my parents are so willing to send me back and like don't have to worry about like the money aspect of it. Um, so, yeah, I think just like the mind switch of like not taking anything for granted anymore has been huge in these past few months. <laughs> So I think that a lot of people would have an answer that's something like that, but then this is purely, I mean, neither of us are going to have the answer to it. Do you think that whenever we go back to whatever our new normal is, how, right. how long do you think before people forget that? I, again, like I said, like, I don't know if I have an answer for that. Like I, I think that as much as I would like to say, you know, never, like we'll never forget like the, to take some things for granted. I mean, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I would hope that it takes a lot of time for us to like get back to like a, a baseline normal. But until then, like, I think every day again, it just has to choose to like not take things for granted. So I, I really have no idea. Like I have friends that are all over the spectrum. Friends are like, I'm not wearing my mask. Like I don't need to. And people are like, I'm going to not take anything for granted ever again. So I think again, like it's just this whole spectrum of like people's differing opinions on right. where we at now. Like I have no idea. Sounds like, you know, college in general. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, so you you talk very highly of, of UNC. Mm -hmm. Did you always want to go to UNC? Or is that something that you kind of explored later? Or I know you were close with Miss Hartzell turned cross and mm -hmm. she was a big um, fan and supporter of you going to Carolina. But is that yeah. something that you wanted to do beforehand? Or is that something a teacher influenced? Yeah, so I my answer to that is always sort of my freshman and senior or freshman and sophomore year. I was like, I'm getting out of Davie County. I'm getting out of North Carolina. I'm going to UCLA or Cal Berkeley or NYU. I was like, screw this, I'm leaving. And then junior year is when I started actually touring places and and you know scheduling like official tours. And so I toured UNC first and I absolutely loved it. I mean, of course, like Miss Shu and Miss Hartzell were always like, yes, go to UNC. And you know, right, I'm right. going there. Um, and then I toured like UGA and Virginia and Clemson and like all the in-state schools. And I was just like, none of this is UNC. Like I, I loved it as soon as I set foot on there, like the feeling that people always describe, like, oh, you'll know. I was like, yeah, whatever. And then I went to UNC and I was like, oh my gosh, I get it. Like, I understand. Um, so when I first applied, I only applied to Carolina. I was like, I'm going to Carolina or I'm not going anywhere. And my dad was like, well, maybe you should apply to some other places. <laughs> and so I applied like rolling admission for Tennessee and UK and Clemson got into those. But then like the day that I got into Carolina, 
I was so, I was in Miss Shu's room. I was staying after for yearbook and she's like, open the decision right now. Like you're not driving home with this anticipation. So I opened it in her room and I was like, oh my God. And I was so excited. And so I drove home and my dad like ran out with his UNC gear on and was so excited. <laughs> and my parents were like, maybe you should like wait a week, make sure this is really where you want to go. And then that next morning I was like, nope, put down the deposit right now. I'm going to Carolina no matter what. And I, I mean, it has exceeded every expectation that I ever had for what college was supposed to be like. And I just love it. And I, uh, I grew up in a Carolina family and, and it's, it's those things that, you know, it's the intangibles, I guess is what we call them in sports. Um, but like you were saying, um, you know, biased, fully admitting that you're biased, fully admitting <laughs> right. that. Um, but I think that, and I don't know if you've ever been on Appalachian's campus or not, but I just went this like past going, weekend. gorgeous, but like going to Chapel Hill in October is like one of my favorite places in the world. It's and it's, and it's that, um, that Charles Carraw speech. Um, I don't know if you know it when talking about the bicentennial and there's just something about the air around Chapel Hill in in October and things are like kind of ending their bloom and all that stuff. And it's, and it's just a gorgeous place much yeah. like in my opinion, Appalachian is, you know, when the leaves start turning and you can go up to the parkway and stuff like that, I just, it's one of my favorite places in the world. And I, that's important for yeah. college is that you enjoy it. Like you enjoy being in that space. It's not just what's going to be the best for my major or what's going to make me the most money. It's you need to be in a good mental space because if you don't have oh, that, sure. your life is going to suck. Like I'm going to yeah. be honest, like it's, you need oh, to yeah. transfer because it's not going to be fun for you. Yeah. Um, so speaking of that, you're at Carolina. It sounds like you're doing well. I know we've talked outside of of this and when you came to a few of the soccer games. Um, but what is your major? And did you want to do that? Do you have a major? <laughs> and how many times do you think it's going to change? Okay, so let me just walk you through okay. my first year. So I, I applied as a communications major. I have no okay. idea what communications is. My parents are both communications majors. I was like, sure. So I applied and I got in as that. And then does, for, real quick, does Carolina yeah. let you formally apply or do you have to wait? Because like at Appalachian, you couldn't formally declare until you had taken like 25 semester hours. Oh, yeah. You can declare like on your application, okay. you can declare like a major. Um, gotcha. So I declared communications and then I went to um, like the admitted students day and English and communications were grouped together in like the little info session. So I was like, oh, my gosh, I want to be an English major now because I loved AP Lit and AP Lang. And I was like, I'm going to be an English right. major. So then at orientation, that's like the only time that you can switch your major without having to have like an advising appointment. So I was like, all right, I'm going to switch to be an English major. And this is where things really start to kick up. So then I was English and media and journalism. And then okay. I was media and journalism and computer science. And then I was media and journalism and political science. And now I'm back to media and journalism and English. But I'm going to switch to media and journalism and global studies. And that's where I think I'm going to stay. It's, it's a if lot. That is a lot. And I mean, you're just now starting your sophomore year, so it might change 19,000 more times. Exactly. Um, but for those of you that don't know, um, and it's a little bit different going into the grad school program than the undergrad program, and that's true for any school, is Carolina has one of the best J schools, journalism schools in yeah. the country, if not the world. Yeah. So like, if you want to do journalism or media uh, or any kind of communications or stuff like that, Carolina is, if you can get in, a great place to be. Yeah, it is the place to go. And my... Like you can either concentrate in journalism or you can concentrate in advertisement and public relations, which is all like, like if you take a Mr. Pollard's class, you, which you should, by the way, shout out Mr. Pollard. That's the reason I'm a media and journalism major. It's all like Photoshop and Premiere. Yeah, it's it's awesome. Like uh, the J school, like all the professors are so willing to help and just so awesome. And I am very, very happy with that major. So but it's awesome. well, that's good. Hopefully, you know, you stick with it. And if not, whatever you find, I know you're going to do really well with, um, yeah. you'll have to keep a running tally for me. Yes, um, I will. so it sounds like Carolina's definitely met all your expectations, even through this, you know, unfortunate COVID pandemic we're in, it still sounds like it's doing well to meet those expectations. Um, you've only been out a year, mm -hmm. you've only been gone and, and you've kind of been back in Davy for half of it. Right. But for those of the, um, the students that are still at Davy, do you have any, like, I'm now gone and looking back on it, here's a piece of advice. Or here's something I wish I knew or something like that, or any kind of wisdom to impart. Oh, to them. yeah. 100%. I was thinking about this a lot. I um, mean, since being back and being back around my peers, there's nothing that I like regret from being at Davie because I loved, you know, the four years that I was there. But like, if there's just one thing that I wish I could like go back and tell myself is just like, stop playing the GPA game so hard. 
Like I played that game till my last do, day. Do the, I'm doing the preach emoji. Yeah. <laughs> yes, while, you're, while you're saying it that. Is, it is controlling. It is so controlling. And like my junior year, I took five APs. And then my senior year, I took four. And like I have friends that go, go, that go to Carolina with me that took like three their junior year and two their senior year. And like, I mean, like I said, Mr. Pollard's class, I, it was a weird class that I took senior year. I had a weird gap in my schedule. And like, that's the reason that I decided my major. Like, I wish I would have had time and like, wish I would have just like sat down and chosen classes that I think I would have enjoyed. Like any agriculture class or like carpentry or masonry, like fun classes like that, that I would have learned life skills right. instead of sitting in classes, which I mean, given I did enjoy my AP classes and like AP classes are good. But I played right. it so hard when I just realized, like, I didn't need to. Like, I took a lot of extra classes that I didn't need to when I would have been just as happy in, like, some fun classes. And who knows what else I would have enjoyed. Maybe I would be, like, an ag major now. Like, I have no idea. Right. But I just – I wish I wouldn't have been so competitive all four years and just, like, taken time to, like, step back and just enjoy some of the social things that I think I missed out on. And I think that, you know, that's something that I try to get to my my students. Um is like it's gpa important yeah i mean right. we can't get around the fact that it's important and you right. should always do as well as you can in your classes but you know you can't just kill yourself with these just ridiculous workloads all the time because you're not going to be in a good mental state and you're not going to enjoy it you're not going to have fun and a couple of my favorite classes that i ever took in college were classes i just randomly were like yep. ah this fills an elective spot and then I took it and I was like, this is great. Why right. didn't I do the more of this? So yeah. I think that's an important thing to do. Um, but I think that's also a failure on our end, on the educational end mm. of, um, there's a couple of, of big things that I get frustrated with. And I think that part of it, and I'm not calling anybody out, I'm not calling any school or teacher or anything out. I think that because of the GPA game that teachers know you're gonna have to play later, there's this like air of learned helplessness almost yeah from k8 and that's i'm not saying that any of those teachers are bad i know plenty of them in k8 who do a fantastic job getting you ready for when you come to me as a freshman but like when i set my class up and i have my kids and i'm like go ask questions and they're like like that's what college is right the professors are there to tell you things they're not there to sit down and hold your hand right and the quicker you learn how to ask questions and go to see your professors and go to office hours and, and check in with them and your advisors. Um, yeah, play the GPA game, but also, you know, play, you know, for your own health and for yeah. your own future. And so, I mean, it's, it's tough to know what you're going to like, and that's part of what high school is, but right. um, you said you didn't really have any regrets at Davey. And that's, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's good to try to have as few regrets as possible. Um, are there any experiences you know, aside from class, like maybe we're not talking academics that you wish you could have had at Davy and looking back on, you're like, oh, I wish I'd have done this or I would have done that or. I mean, I don't know. I think they're like looking back. I think that everyone obviously like their high school experience is different. Like a bunch of my best friends in high in uh, college, like had this awesome friend group that they come back to when they come back to like Winston or wherever they're from. And like, I didn't really have like a friend group, but I had like so many things, like so many friend groups that I was a part of that I enjoyed, like my student council friend group, like Maggie Junker and Caitlin Segres and Azoma and Danielle that I just like loved all of them. So I think right. that, like, even though I sometimes like miss not having like a core friend group in high school, like I had so many clubs that I enjoyed and was like a part of all those different groups that like, I didn't really need it. Like I had student council, I had young life, I had national honor society, I had yearbook and like I had friends in all my classes. Like as much as I wish I like, came back and had this awesome friend group to like come back to, like I didn't really need it. And like, I like coming back to, I mean, people like you and then Miss Shu and Miss Fender and then like some of my close friends that I had throughout those different groups, just to, like see one-on-one -on -one. and I'm like perfectly fine with that. So yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that, you know, it, it's good to not have just one group of friends that you rely on. Yeah. Um, because one, it's, it's good to get outside of your bubble and learn about other people. And, you know, and Davey's somewhat homogenous. Yeah. But it's there's still a lot of different opinions and, and culture that are brought in and people move in and you're not from Davey, like you moved in. So yeah. like that brings a different experience. Um, and I mean, even if they only move from Raleigh or Asheville and you don't have to move from, you know, Seattle or or New York or something. Right. Um, but it's also cool that you don't just, you know, if they're busy, then you can't do anything. You're like, okay, well, I'll try this other group of friends right. and see if they got stuff going on. Um, and I think that that would be a big tip for me for when you go to college is to not just have three or four friends that you spend 
all of your time with. You know, have friends in your major and have friends that like to go to football games with you and have friends that go running with you or go to the gym with you or and yeah. have friends that go and, you know, you know, you draw or you do art or something, make music together. Like yeah. don't have the same four people because then yeah. you start hearing the negative things about everyone and it makes you sour and it's not great. Also, like be friends with your professors. Like I'm friends with a lot of my professors. Like I was having a debate with one of my friends a few days ago and I like emailed one of my professors. I was like, hey, what do you think about this? Like as much as your professors aren't there to like hold your hand through it, they are there to make sure that you succeed no matter what. And like I, I one week I was like going through like just a rough week, like mental health wise and like family stuff wise. And I emailed my professor and I was like, hey, I have a lot of assignments that I just like haven't caught up on. Like what, like, I don't know what to do. And he was like, you know what? Like, don't, don't, don't come to class the rest of the week. Like take your week, be, have it right. be a mental health week. Like your professors really are your friends and like they will value you as like adults that are coming in and like are wanting to succeed. So like be friends with them, go to their office hours, like see them after class. Like they are there to help you no matter what. And they want to like hear your opinions and hear your ideas and like bounce stuff off of them. Like they really are there for whatever you need and want from them. Like be friends with your professors. It is such, such a great idea. And, you know, and sometimes you're going to have professors who are just insert whichever word you'd like here. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and that's OK. You're still going to hopefully learn something from them, even if right. it's something they didn't do well. You're like, I don't want to ever be like that or I don't want to ever do this. Yeah. But a lot of your professors, if you take the time to get to know them and, and I know this comes from me and, and everything, but I've never you know doubted the fact that, you know, I, I am a nerd. Um, that's why I have a degree in science and that's why I teach science, sit near the front and actually yep. talk to them. Because if something happens and you're just a face in the crowd and you're like, fix my grade, they are not going to do anything no. for you. But if they're like, oh, hey, Grace, you know, what's up? And you're like, hey, I thought I understood this question and I misread it. Maybe you get some points back or right. maybe they let you redo it. Like it's this, the personal relationships that you build. And it's the same in high school. Like, hopefully I feel like you you can talk to me, most of you. Um, it doesn't mean I'm going to always go out of my way to fix something for you. But if I hear you, I can try to prevent it from happening in the future. Right. Um, and that's one thing that I will say I loved about my department at App was we were tiny. Like when, when I graduated, I was the largest graduating class of geology in Appalachian history. And there were 12 of us. Um, yeah, <laughs> Wow. there were 12 of us seniors that year and we were the largest group that had ever graduated at once. And, you know, some of you might be like, oh, I want to do that. I want to go to a school and like, that's a big party school or whatever. Don't pick no. schools because of that. That's no. a terrible idea. Not even getting into the reasons of why you shouldn't do that. But, um, I know some of you are going to, but please <laughs> don't. We've talked about this. Why, um, is that smaller schools or majors that are smaller, even at bigger universities, you get that one-on-one -on -one time with your professors. And I was able to go into literally every single one of my professor's offices unannounced, didn't send an email, didn't call. And was just like, Dr. L, I don't get this. And yeah. she would, you know, if she had the time, she would stop and sit there and explain it to me. Um, or it's like, hey, you know, um, Dr. Carmichael, I, I thought I understood this. I'm not catching up on the chemistry here. Like I know that, and you kind of explain it and then they help you because they're like, it's not just like, help me. Like if right. you explain where you're having the questions at, they know that you've been to class. They know that you've been paying attention. They know that you care. It's going to go a lot further for you than just being a face and a number and showing up and wanting help. Yeah. I mean, even for me on the opposite side, like not taking any science classes, taking English classes and journalism classes. Like when I am starting a paper, I go to my professor first. I'm like, here's my idea. Like, what can I do? Like I had a professor, I took medieval to 18th century British literature, the craziest <laughs> class that, that I had to get for my English major. And I was like, what in the world? And this was like the coolest guy ever. I was every single paper that I wrote, I like went to him and I was like, Hey, this is what I'm thinking. Like, where should I look for resources? Like, is this a good topic? Is this going to get me somewhere? I mean, cause like, not to scare you, but like once you, you get to college, it's like five to 12 page papers, like as basic assignments. So I'm like, is this going to be enough to fulfill five pages? And because I showed up to class, I sat in the front, I came in for office hours. He was so much more like, I mean, not, not that he wouldn't be helpful, but just like sat down with me. I was like, all right, now, have you seen this line? Go through this line. This is what this means. This is what this word means. Cause I mean, like passages get hard and like college is difficult, but oh, yeah. again, when you're, when you're there and you're showing up and you're consistent, your professors know you're not just doing it to be like a goody two-shoes and be like, oh, see how I showed up to office hours. Like when you really are there and are intentional with your professors, they know that you're there to learn and not just to get a grade, which is what college is about. If that's the one thing that, and Ms. Shu told me this, like 
you're going to college to learn things, not to get a grade. Like I made my first B ever this semester, but I learned more in that class that I got a B in than I did in the rest of my classes. Like you are there to learn things, not again, to just like mark off on your GPA, like go to your professors and learn. Don't just go to get a grade. And, and that's exactly right. And I was talking about this with some people and, and actually Mr. Pollard was one of them um, and Mr. Barker and Mr. Ward. And we were kind of discussing, you know, college in general and how, you know, tuition has unfortunately just taken off. Oh yeah. And, and it, the price of, um, or the cost of living and the cost of inflation or not the cost of inflation, but the rate of inflation, mm -hmm. like they're not matching up. So we understand that four year aren't necessarily in everyone's future, especially, you know, you worked really hard and got your scholarship. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't have a scholarship, that can be a lot of money you have. Oh, to spend. yeah. But what you're going to college for is not a piece of paper that is, I don't think they're in, they're in frame for you. They're not in frame for them that don't like, yeah, I have a, a BS in geology. Great. That piece of paper doesn't say I know geology. It says I learned how to learn to get to the end of learning about geology. Yeah. And that's more important than, you know, do I remember how the stratigraphy of Eastern Tennessee, like, it doesn't matter. Right. But I learned how to work through the processes to get there. And that's what college is for. It's getting yeah. you ready for the figuring things out. Most employers don't care. They're like, oh, you had a 3.72 in math. math. No, they no. want to see that you made it through and that you can do it and you can stick with something. Yeah. Um, and that's something that, you know, obviously you are aware of um, and you have three more years. Grad school, thought about it? I mean, I think about it all the time. I think since being in quarantine and being around my parents, they've asked a lot of those questions recently. And oh, I'm sorry to sound like your parents. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. <laughs> it's a good question to ask. I, as of now, law school is on the horizon. Um, but I okay. told myself that it's a big commitment. And I, I don't know. I, I want to live in a big city for a time. So I'm talking about like NYU or Columbia and my parents are like trying to rein me back in and being like, well, look at cost of living and like, look at all these kind of things. And so <laughs> I told my parents, like, if, you know, I, I decide my junior year, like, that's what I want to do. You know, I'll take the LSAT um, and I'll apply. And if I don't get into like any of my law schools that I want to, I'm going to, you know, work for two years, like either join the Peace Corps or work for a nonprofit or something like that. Um, because I was doing like my research and a bunch of like postgraduate stuff, like they want to see that you have work experience. Like it's not just like undergrad then to graduate school. Like it's a lot of people who like worked for one to five years and then reapply right. for graduate school. So I think that that as of now will like help me decide. I think that I have options either way, whether I go straight into law school or I wait a few years and then go to law school. Also just like, I have the travel bug so big right now. I think just being stuck right. inside has made me just be like, I need to go and explore the world. So I think Peace Corps and stuff like that are like working internationally for a nonprofit will help me kind of like fix my travel bug until I'm like financially stable enough to go and travel. So that's the plan as of now. However, it might change when I get back on campus and start taking more classes. So we'll see. And a big thing that I'll add on to that is do as many internships while you're in school yes. as you can, because while it may not be formal work experience and, you know, some will be paid and some won't and and everything along those lines people, grad schools, or um, employment opportunities, or whatever it is you're doing after your four years, if you go to four year school, they want to see that you're not just in school, they want to yeah. see, you know, clubs aren't much of a thing. I mean, there are a thing, but it's not like getting into college where it's like, I was in student council, and I was on the tennis team. And I did it. Um, my major was this. And here's a research firm I worked at. And here's mm -hmm. um, some in the field experience that it's way more what are you actually doing with it? So yeah. anything you can do like that, you know, maybe take some time, maybe take a break, um, maybe not, depending on what your your grad degree potentially is, mm -hmm. um, is huge. Yeah. And that's something you can kind of start planning out ahead of time. Now, that doesn't mean going back to our AP tests um, and our AP classes, don't, you know, just destroy your free time over it. But it's something to think about moving forward. Yeah, agreed. And I would say, like, don't destroy your free time for sure. But also, like, internships should be a way to kind of test what you do and don't like. So right now, like, I, I oh, love yeah. my job that I'm doing. I'm doing ad NPR for cognition. And I love it. But like, if I thought that I liked it and I got there, I'm like, mm, I didn't really like this. Like, that's okay. Like you're allowed to go to internships and realize like, mm, this isn't really what I want to do. That's what they're for. They're not for you to be like, right. this is what you have to do. If you work at a law firm, like this has to go towards like law school. Like it's in order to test out, like, what do I really want to do with my life? And like, I still don't even really know. 
So it's okay. I mean, after my first month, I was like, oh my gosh, everyone here is so put together and I am so not put together. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, that is a feeling that is warranted in high school and your first few years of college. Like, it's okay to not know what you want to do with your life. It will come with time. And that's just something I've had to teach myself and like relearn every month. Like, it's okay that I don't have it put together. I'll figure it out eventually. I mean, I'm much older than you and I'm still not sure. (laughs) So who knows when it's going to present itself. (laughs) <laughs> um, so th- it sounds great. It sounds like you're having a good time at Carolina. It sounds like you have some tentative plans for the future, but you also are aware that those are going to change potentially. I think that not setting things in stone is also a good tip. Oh yeah. Um, and it, it seems like you're aware of that. If, if you try to make this rigid plan for yourself moving forward, you're just going to fail because yeah. you're either going to go into something that makes you unhappy or you're not going to hit that target and that's going to make you feel discouraged and then things can just tumble from there. Yeah, totally agree. What is it like being back home and living with your sister again? Because for a whole semester, I got one side of the story and you didn't stick <laughs> up for yourself. But now I'm going to let you have time to stick up for yourself here and kind of get back. <laughs> yeah, I I love, as much as I love living at Carolina I've loved being home like as much as I trash talk her like she took over my room like eh, I have loved being home I think that like my senior year we were definitely like close sort of um but then like the distance has definitely like made us grow a lot a lot closer not to like throw Emily under the bridge but she did cry when I moved in I've never seen her cry before and she cried when I moved in so sorry Emily just gonna broadcast that um but yeah since being home I've she's just like I've like seen her mature and I'm like so blown away by her and like she's so smart and so fun to be around and like because we have nothing to do we're spending a lot of time together like if she's bored and I'm bored we're like all right let's just go driving and we'll just go drive around like it has been really really good for our relationship I think and also just like seeing her grow as a high schooler who is like interested in all these different things and who like loved your class and loves volleyball and just like is so involved I have loved seeing that side of her and getting to like know that side of her now so yeah I I mean I've loved being home definitely ready to go back but have loved the time that I spent at home yeah, and I had a you know a similar story with my sister. We're actually the exact same um, distance apart that you and, and Emily are. Is mm-hmm. that when she was a freshman at Davie, I was a freshman at Appalachian. Um, and you know, I was, I didn't have like a close you know relationship with her because we were four years apart, and then we weren't interested in the same things. Um, yeah. She's really good at kind of arts and that kind of stuff, and I you know I was in band and everything, but art has never been my thing. I've never been great at it. I was much more into sports and stuff like that. So we didn't have a way to, to communicate really with each other. And then once I left and came back, it was like, oh, now we have these things to talk about. And so it's, it's interesting yeah. how that works and how that happens and how, you know, it, it will happen probably for them too, if they have siblings or has happened if they have older ones. Um, I'm yeah. going to talk to Nick Quants later as well. So I'm interested to see what him and Rachel have gone through. Um, if it's a similar yeah. story with them or not. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think this has been awesome. Hopefully, you know, they get something from it. Hopefully my technical issues yeah. haven't screwed it up too bad. Hopefully the meat has been <laughs> recording the whole time. Um, anything else you want to bring up? Anything else you want to talk about? Any last advice? Any words of wisdom any professors have imparted? Oh, gosh. I don't know. There's probably a lot that I'm not thinking of. But if any of you guys are looking to come to Carolina, ask Mr. Farabee get in touch with me. I would love to talk about it more. If there's anything that I've brought up, you're like, what? I would love to talk about it. So if they ever come to you with questions, you can send them my way. I'm so eager to talk about anything Davey or Carolina related at any point in time. So I'll be glad to do that. You know, I'll, I'll have a new crop of freshmen coming in soon and, and they'll be seeing this too. And they'll have no idea who you are. Maybe <laughs> a few of them, maybe, but most of them maybe, probably, probably not. not. <laughs> it's okay. Well, Grace, I really appreciate you spending some time here and talking about all this stuff. And and hopefully, um, you know, somebody will latch on to one thing you said and take it and run with it. And that's really what all of this is right now is it's finding a little like, oh, I really like what she said. And I really like what he said. And I really like yeah. this professor and making yourself out of, you know, these little clips and pieces. Um, so, you know, I'm always here to talk for those of you that are still at Davey. Um, she has said that she's been willing to talk to you if you have interest in Chapel Hill or Carolina or just maybe communications and journalism and things like that. Um, you can kind of shed some light on as a first year. Uh, but other than that, you know, I don't know how long we've been talking, probably a little bit 
but maybe they'll listen. Maybe they won't. Maybe it'll be like class and they'll be on the phones the whole time. Who knows? <laughs> so anyway, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day and I will talk to you soon. All right.